Tonight... <laughs> Police Blotter, starring Bill Zuckert as Sergeant Brad Peters. Name? Harry Dennis. You dress? 543 Larson Street. Charge? Suspicion of murder. The heritage that you and I share as Americans has been given to us by many great men. One of these was Patrick Henry. He was a very lazy youngster, preferring to hunt or fish rather than go to school. But as he grew older, he developed an interest in law. This, together with a marvelous gift for oratory, led to his becoming a famous lawyer and later helped him serve several terms as governor of Virginia. In 1775, with the American Revolution at a critical stage, Patrick Henry made his famous speech, ending with the immortal words, I know not what course others may take, but as for me, give me liberty or give me death. Patrick Henry's words have rung through the ages. They are part of your American heritage. Police Blotter, authentic dramas of police work and the constant battle that goes on night and day against crime. Homicide by Hurricane on... Police Blotter. I'm Brad Peters, Sergeant, Homicide. Been inside a police station. Phone rings. It might be anything from disturbing the peace to murder. Whatever or whoever it is, rich or poor, innocent or guilty, sooner or later I get to know them all. Nine a.m. The call came in from Jonas Airport on the bay side of the precinct. Small field for private planes. A man named Costa, working on experimental plane, was found dead in the wind tunnel. I've been waiting for you. Where you been? Just getting out here, Mr. Uh... Dennis, Harry Dennis. I told Ben to stay away from that wind tunnel. Told him a dozen times if I told him once. But he had his own ideas. That it up ahead in that hangar? Yeah. You're the one called the police? Yeah, that's right. I got here at 8 this morning, same as usual. I waited for Ben, and he didn't show up. I began to wonder. Finally, I looked in the wind tunnel. Why there? Because that's where I left him last night. Costa and I are working on an experimental plane, a flying platform kind of gadget. Uh Uh-huh. We were making wind tunnel tests. But last night at midnight, I had had it. I told Ben the project was a flop, and why throw good money after bad? You were partners? Up until last night. How did the argument end? What? What argument? Dissolving a partnership usually means an argument. Not with Ben and me. We've been friends for years. I just threw in the sponge, that's all. Look, why do you guys always figure there had to be an argument? Yeah, it's just force of habit, Mr. Dennis. Never mind, let's see the body. I saw it, but there wasn't much to see. It was all chewed up. That's a tough way to die, huh? Yeah, poor Ben. You see how a wind tunnel is, Sergeant? The air is sucked in through that opening at the far end. Uh Uh-huh. These two giant propellers up here build up the airspeed. Over here, uh, this is where we set up the airplane model. It's suspended on this platform. Wires are used to test stability, turbulence factors, and so on. How did Costa get in here? With that door, the same one we just used now. Only he couldn't have used it while the wind tunnel was in action. The door locks? Automatically, once power is on. That's what I don't understand. What? How it started. It can only be turned on from outside. Ben must have been in here working on the model. Then something went haywire with the wind tunnel controls. It started up and there he was caught in a wind stream of over 250, 300 miles per hour. You sure the controls went haywire? What else? Well, I'll have the controls checked, Mr. Dennis. Maybe they're okay. In which case... What are you getting at? Murder. All anybody has to do is push that button. The controls were checked. They worked perfectly. At 10.30, the medical examiner reported on cause of death. Body battered by sledgehammer wind inside the tunnel. 
I went through the dead man's clothes, checked the possessions. I found a remnant of a typewritten letter. A few words. Must have money by Thursday next or will file for... And that was all. I spent the next half hour questioning personnel at the airfoil. Me? You're taking me in? What for, Sergeant? Suspicion of murder, Mr. Dennis. Oh, you're off your rocker. Why me? You were the last one to see Costa alive. Who says so? Guard on duty last night at the field entrance. Look, that's nothing. This field isn't well guarded. Sure, there's a fence, but the fence is broken in, in a dozen places. Anybody could have walked in. And there's another reason. You said you didn't argue with Costa. So? You were heard arguing. Loud voices, threats. I can explain all that. You'll get your chance. Dennis was taken in, booked on suspicion of murder. 12.15 p.m., I went over to Costa's apartment, the 800 block Shoreham Street. Furniture was being moved out. I found a woman supervising. Dark hair, good looking, well dressed. Who am I? Helen Costa, that's who I am. Mrs. Ben Costa? Not for any longer than I can help. And why shouldn't I take this furniture out? I paid for it, not Ben. He put every penny into that stupid invention. I'm sick of it, do you understand? I told him over and over I couldn't go on this way. You're divorcing him? I told him that last night. Last night? Where was this? Well, it was at the... It, it was right here, Sergeant, here in this apartment. Uh -huh. What time was it? Oh... 6.30. You're certain of that? No, I'm not certain. I was upset. I told him either he gave me back all the money I had poured into that invention or I'd file for divorce. You put your own money into it? Every cent I had. Mrs. Costa, do you own a typewriter? A typewriter? Yeah. Well, no. How did you tell your husband? In writing? In writing? No, I just told him, that's all. I spoke to him. If you're contemplating divorce, you have a lawyer, haven't you? Yes. All right, what's his name? William Jefferson. William Jefferson. His address? 250 Court Avenue. Court. Excuse me. Yeah, sure. Hello. Yes, this is Helen. What? What? Oh, no. No. No, e excuse me, I, I can't talk now. Sergeant, why didn't you tell me? About your husband? That's why you're here, isn't it? Why didn't you tell me? Who did tell you, Mrs. Custer? That was my lawyer, Bill Jefferson. Dead. And all the while, I was... I was having the furniture moved out. All the time, Nobody I... can blame you if you didn't know. Well, yes, but... But it's so ghoulish. I... Oh, it was Dennis. Dennis, it must have been. His partner? Fine partner. He never put any money into it. All he was doing was fastening onto Ben like a leech. He always got paid. Even when Ben was, was starving, Dennis got paid. Is there anything else you want, Sergeant? Not right now, Mrs. Custer. I, I'd better have this furniture moved back. Oh, it, it, it's awful. That, that's what it is. It's just awful. She was crying. It could have been grief. On the other hand, it could have been guilt. I got one of the neighbors to stay with her. I went over to Court Avenue, called on Attorney Jefferson. Yes, Sergeant, Mrs. Coster was going to file for divorce. Now, naturally, it's not necessary. You knew Ben Coster yourself, Mr. Jefferson? I met him once or twice. Are you his lawyer? Well, not recently. Wouldn't have been ethical to handle his wife's divorce and represent him at the same time. But I was representing him until uh, about a month ago. Why did you stop? Money, Sergeant. He was delinquent in his bill. Uh-huh. How much do you owe you? Over $5,000. Uh -huh. Most of that was for filing the patent on his invention. I had to do a patent search, draw up the usual legal documents. Very complicated. You've seen his invention? Yes, several times. What do you think of it? Well, I'm a lawyer, not an aeronautical expert, but I'd say it was worthless. Never got off the ground. He talked a while longer. I got no further information. I went back to the office, put in a call at the government patent office in Washington. Yeah, that's right. Peter's homicide. We're investigating the murder of a man named Ben Costa. Yeah. I'd like information on a patent filed in his name in the aeronautical field. Uh-huh. Well, the other name on it may be Harry Dennis. Yeah. Well, get back to me as soon as you can, will you? Thanks. <laughs>
3.30 p.m. Got the information from the patent office. Only two names on the patent. Ben Costa, Harry Dennis. I held further conversation with Dennis in my office. Now you know you can't hold me. I didn't have anything to do with it. What happens to that invention with Costa dead? The invention isn't any good. It's worthless. Well, as surviving partner, do you get it? Look, that happens to be my business. How much money was invested in that uh, invention? All told? Mm -hmm. Well, I should say sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000. What was your share? That's my business, too. You ever see this? Must have money by Thursday next or we'll file for... Where's the rest of them? That's all. It's not familiar to me. Whose is it? We found it in the wind tunnel. Must have been Ben's. I, I don't get it. What money? I thought you might know. Did Costa borrow any money? Not that I know of. He had some, I had some, and his wife. Say, this could be about a divorce. She was pretty mad about Ben using up all her money. That's all you can tell me? Yes, except that you've got no right to keep me here. I talked to my lawyer. He says you can't... We can. For 24 hours. Now, one more question. You can ask. I may not answer. Who was Costa's lawyer for the past month? Bill Jefferson. Jefferson says no. Oh, that's right. Sure. A man named Hazel. John Hazel. I thanked Dennis, then checked the phone book for Hazelton. Lawyer. The address, 2850 Mandrake. I went over there at once. Uh, excuse me, miss. Yes. Oh, yes, Sergeant. Uh, I'd like to see Mr. Hazelton. Well, he's very busy right now. Doesn't want to be disturbed, but if it's important... It could be. What's it about? Murder. Oh. That got her. She disappeared at once. While I waited, I checked the typewriter. I found a sample in the wastebags basket. Put it in my pocket. Five minutes later, I was talking to Hazelton. Yes, I heard about it. Terrible tragedy, terrible. Anything I can do at all, just call on me, Sergeant. I am. Not that I can give you much help. I've only known Costa a month. And Dennis? Same. Not very well in either case. This invention, were affairs in a tangle? Tangle? Sergeant, you've heard of the Gordian Knot. Yeah, I think so. Oh, this was worse. Well, just two days ago, I learned that Costa had borrowed $20,000 and was being threatened with a lawsuit. $20,000? Well, that's the figure he gave me. Who did he borrow it from? I don't know. You're his lawyer and you don't know? Well, I know that sounds odd, but it's not really. You see, he told me that on the phone two days ago, very much upset. Said he'd drop in and discuss it with me. Mm -hmm. Well? He died before he could. So all I know is there's someone around whom Costa owed 20000 and there's one other point. About the debt? Yes, I shouldn't violate a client's confidence, but since Coster is dead, he kited the figure, Sergeant. Kited the figure? Well, that's what he told me. The original note was for 2000 He changed it to twenty. Yes. That's criminal offense? Yes, so I told him. He said he was desperate for money. He said his invention was close to becoming practical. He'd been testing out the bugs. He had blueprints of an improved model. An improved model? Well, that's what he said. Of course, I have no way of knowing whether that was true or not. Where did Costa have his office? Office? Mm hmm Well, the only office he had, as far as I know, was out at the airport. I asked some further questions, but that was all he knew. I went back to the office, gave the lab the original typewritten sentence. Gave them the sample from Hazelton's office. And I arranged for searches for other samples. From the other lawyer, Jefferson. From Dennis. From Mrs. Costa. She had denied having a typewriter, but in a murder case, a lot of people deny a lot of things. At 6 p.m., Dennis was sprung by his lawyer. Okay, Mr. Dennis, you're out on bail. Just don't leave town. I have no intention of leaving town. Any more thoughts? About Ben? Yeah. I don't know why I should help you out. Me, Mr. Dennis? Yourself, you're the suspect. But I tell you... Okay. I guess you were just doing your job. Okay. Ben and I did have a quarrel. Last night? Yes, every day for the past week. Sergeant, did you know what that darn fool had done? I'm listening. He stole $18,000. Eighteen. He had taken a personal loan for two thousand. He hiked the value to twenty thousand. 
He told me all about it. He was worried sick. The lender had threatened criminal action. You were involved? I'm his partner. In a partnership, each is responsible. Who gave him the loan, Dennis? I don't know. Your own partner and you don't know? I told you no. Well, if it was a personal loan... Personal? You... It wasn't. He forged my name to it, too. Now, if there's nothing else... Yeah, there is one more thing. Yeah? I hear that invention was close to success. What? Where'd you hear that? Is that true? Don't you think I'd know if it was? It's not true, Sergeant. It can't be true. Unless... Yep. Ben worked there a lot, alone. Without you? Yeah. Many nights I knocked off at five or six. He kept going. I never thought of that. A man who would alter a check and forge another signature, he might be completely unscrupulous. Would that flying platform be worth anything? Worth anything? Sergeant, if it worked, it would be worth millions. Millions! The newspapers carried it in the late editions. Inventor murdered on brink of great triumph. I checked the lab at 8.30. I was still working on the typewriter search. And then a call came in at 9 p.m. Peters, homicide. Right. How long ago? Check. The call was from plainclothesman Walker. He had Mrs. Costa under surveillance. She had gone to Jarvis Airport. I went out there, walked across the airport, till I came to the hangar that housed the wind tunnel. I entered through the big steel door. And I could just feel that echo. And just then, the door beside me opened. I saw it was a man. I didn't recognize him. But a flashlight went on across the hangar from me. And then there were two figures. A man and a woman. I started to tiptoe across. Ah, no! No! Mrs. Costa! Mrs. Costa! There was nothing. There was no answer. And then something came flying through the air. And it hit the hangar wall instead of me. Now look, you're wasting your time. There's been one murder already. You can't get away with another. Mrs. Costa? Mrs. Scott! And then I heard it. I couldn't tell where it was. Hanger had echoes. Might have come from any direction. But somebody was dragging her. And I listened. And there was a door somewhere. Not an outside door. It sounded different. And then the same door again, closing. What other door was there? Front door on the hangar, the back door, what other? And another sound. And I listened. It was a hum. It started low. It seemed to vibrate through the hangar. The wind tunnel. And then I used the flashlight. Wide open this time. Narrow beam, but strong. And I ran toward the wind tunnel. And beside the door leading into it, I saw the starting button. Just as I got there... Hey, one side! Drop that leg! Look, you fool, whoever you are! You'll never know. He was big. He was bigger than I was, and he was frightened. He was desperate. He was tough to handle. But I finally handled him. My head was swimming. All I had was a match. First one went out, but the second one held. And I found the switch, and I cut it off. And I went into the wind tunnel. And that was like stepping into a hurricane. Wind sucked at me and I fought it. Mrs. Custer! Mrs. Custer! Help! All right, take it easy. Just keep talking. Keep talking. All right, okay, easy. All right, easy now, easy. The wind, the wind. I know. Look, stop it, stop it. Take it easy. Now listen, it's dying down now. It's all right, Mrs. Costa. I helped her out of the wind tunnel. Her clothes were torn. She certainly needed another permanent. I found the hangar lights, switched them on. I sat her down, slipped handcuffs on the man I had knocked out. 
Okay, Mrs. Custer. It's William Jefferson, huh? Yes. He killed your husband? Yes. He came here last night. Ben owed him money. A lot of money. $20,000? You knew about that? Yeah, we knew. Another couple of hours, we'll have the proof. Will was... Well, he was angry at Ben. Very angry. Only because of the money? Well, yes. Nothing else, huh? No, of course not. What else could there be? She's lying, Sergeant. Why are you lying, Helen? So you're conscious, Jefferson, huh? She came to me for a divorce. We were going to get married, Helen and me. <laughs> That's funny. Funny? I'm a lawyer. I didn't want to wait for a divorce. I figured it'd be easier with Ben out of the way, an accident. Accident? Okay, no accident. I came here late last night. I sneaked through a break in the fence. I put him in the wind tunnel. And, and you did the same to me. I cut it out, you, Mrs. Custer. You know why he wanted to kill me, too, don't you? Don't you, Sergeant? Yeah, I can guess. You don't have to guess, Sergeant. I got panicky, that's why. Helen knew what I'd done. I told her. Then I got panicky. She was the only witness. I told her to meet me here. I picked up that story in the newspapers as an excuse. That Custer had blueprints around a new flying platform, a successful one worth millions. You tried to kill me. Yes, I didn't want to, but I had to. I had to keep your mouth shut. You know, Sergeant, these handcuffs. What about them? Well, you don't need them now. I'm finished. I know that. Can't you take them off? Sure. When you're sitting pretty behind bars. <laughs> Name? William Jefferson. The address? 1304 Elmwood Place. Charge? Murder. Remarks? Mrs. Costa turned state's evidence. The laboratory found the piece of letter had been typed on Jefferson's machine. Jefferson, indicted and tried, found guilty. Executed for murder, first degree. Signed, Sergeant Brad Peters, homicide. <laughs> You have just heard Police Blotter, starring Bill Zuckert as Sergeant Brad Peters. The cast included Joseph Bolin, Elaine Rost, and Carl Frank. Tonight's drama, Homicide by Hurricane, was written by Sheldon Stark and directed by William Marshall. Police Blotter has come to you through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service. <laughs>